Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the running return on investment, or ROI. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, the running return on investment for Bitcoin is an interesting metric because it also tells a fairly compelling story. And essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the one-year running ROI. And what you'll notice for Bitcoin's one-year running ROI is that it tends to bottom out around 0.2 or so, give or take, which essentially means 80% down from where the price was a year ago. And it seems to be pretty consistent with that approximately 0.2 level. That's why whenever you get bear markets in the cryptoverse, oftentimes you'll hear people say, well, Bitcoin will likely drop around 80%. The bull market peaks are showing lower highs. This is an artifact of diminishing returns. In fact, if you were to go to sort of the first cycle, even though we don't actually have data for that first peak there, because we don't have price data going back a year before it, but you can see over the last previous year, prior year, Bitcoin went up about 147x. At the next peak in 2013, Bitcoin had gone up approximately 89x from a year ago. That was what more or less marked the top. In 2017, it had gone up around 25x from a year prior. And in 2021, it had gone up around 11x from a year prior. So what's interesting is that you essentially have this diminishing peaks in the one-year ROI. But what you'll notice is that Bitcoin this cycle has actually just been hovering between two and three essentially since November of 2023. This is not that uncommon. If you were to go back two cycles ago, you will see a very similar setup where there was an explosive move by Bitcoin, and then it essentially hovered between 2 to 3x. You can also see something very similar last cycle, except it spent a lot more of its time just between an ROI of 1 all the way up to maybe slightly above 2 or so. And it didn't really get above two in any durable fashion until November of 2020. So November of the having year. If you were to go to the cycle before that one, you can see that it didn't durably get above three until April of the post having year. So it's a really familiar setup, but there's also sort of the elephant in the room of, well, you also have these diminishing peaks. So there's a case to be made and I think a fairly compelling case that the one-year ROI will likely not go as high as it did last cycle and represent, you know, essentially an 11 to 12x move from a year previous, you know, from a prior, a prior, from the prior year. That That's not measured from the low, right? It's not measured from the low. It's just measured from one year prior. For instance, for Bitcoin to go up 11x from where it was one year ago, well, if you think about where Bitcoin was about one year ago, uh, it, was, it was just broken up to around $40,000 or so. I think a lot of people at this point would just be happy to see Bitcoin break through 100K since it seems to have um, sort of slowed down now. But even even getting to 100K is only essentially a 2.5x from where it was a year ago. So that's one of the reasons why it probably won't reach uh, that same level. And of course, you could draw a line through this to try to connect the peaks. But again, it is a, ra a rather difficult exercise in, in some regards because it, you know, not every peak is, is sort of possible to connect the dots, right? If you look at the 2013 first peak, you can see it was all the way down here, but Bitcoin still had about an 80% drop between that peak and then the one that eventually came later. And then over here, last cycle, you can see Bitcoin's price went higher in November of 2021, but the one-year ROI topped out in you know March and April. So it's not a perfect metric by any stretch of the imagination, because 
there's also sort of this idea that, well, as long as Bitcoin is just between 2 to 3x from the prior year, you're not really seeing a spike on this metric. Um, but it's also not necessarily doing anything different than it's historically done. Now, the one-year ROI is one way to look at it, but you can also look at it with a two-year ROI. And what's interesting about that is when you find when it goes below one, right? You can see in early 2016 and in you know late 2019, early 2020, and then in November, really starting in November 2022, all the way until January 2024, right? This metric was in a fairly familiar spot as well. And then you get sort of the explosion to the upside by the two-year running ROI. And again, it feels very familiar. And note that every cycle, we have also seen diminishing peaks in the two-year return on investment. You could also go out to, say, the three-year. And what's really interesting about the three-year is that it hasn't really spent a lot of time below an ROI of one, right? There hasn't been that many times in history where Bitcoin was lower, um, you know, three years later. It's not that it's never happened. It's just that it, it doesn't happen very frequently. And whenever it is is close to sort of that level, historically, the price of Bitcoin has, you know, um, gone up for a little bit whenever it, it, it gets to that level, as you can see it's doing so again. And it has been doing so uh, for the last couple of months. And then finally, on these longer time frames, you can look at the four-year ROI. What's really fascinating about the four-year ROI is the lowest it's ever been is about a 2.5x, 2.4x or so. So basically, anyone who has bought Bitcoin and held it for at least four years at any point throughout Bitcoin's history has been up a minimum of about 2.4x or so, which is not bad. Right? I mean, only only over the span of four years. Now, you can also look at shorter time frames. Like there's the 180-day ROI, uh, which clearly shows that, you know, it's dropped just below one a couple of times uh, in the last couple of years or so, right? Once in, in sort of Q3 2023, and then here again in Q4, or sorry, Q3 of 2024. So that seems like a somewhat interesting pattern. And we've talked about it in sort of, reference to the RSI as well. Perhaps we'll see ourselves back below one in Q3 of 2025. Um, you could also look at the 90-day ROI and see where it has found support this cycle has been right around uh, you know, 0.7 to 0.8, which is really interesting because that's more or less where it was finding support in the 2015-2016 cycle. Once it stopped going below one, you know, then you really led into the sort of the blow off top. If you go to the 60 day ROI, it gets a lot noisier. And then here's the 30 day ROI just for completeness, if you want to see what it looks like, but it is quite a bit noisier when you look at it like that. But some of the interesting things about the, you know, about shorter time frames like the 30 day ROI is that it, it can tell you when the market eh, perhaps, you know, needs to cool down a little bit, right? You can see here in January, 2023, an explosive move, the market had to consolidate for a while. And then again, in April of 2023, another explosive move, the market had to consolidate for a while. And then when it went back up to this level, it didn't, the price didn't go down, right? But it just, you know, went sideways from mid-November until the beginning part of December, right? So you had two weeks where the price of Bitcoin just kind of consolidated whenever that 30-day ROI, whenever the 30-day ROI hits around 40% or so. Um, similar thing over here in March, 2024, 30 day, a 30 day ROI was at about 50%, more than 50%. And obviously we had a longer cool down. And then recently it actually just hit almost 50% again. So that doesn't necessarily mean you have to cool down immediately, but if you're wondering why the price of Bitcoin hasn't really moved in the last week or so, like, and again, that's not really fair. I mean, Bitcoin just had a very explosive move from 70 K to nearly 100k to suggest it's not moving is is somewhat ridiculous but for the people that are wondering you know why is it not getting past 100k right now why is it it stalling out and not making that move a lot of times after getting explosive moves like this you'll see bitcoin you know hesitate for a while consolidate perhaps wait for some of that other data to come in uh, we've talked a lot about how what normally bitcoin does and i mentioned this a week or two ago 
It gets an explosive move that sort of finalizes by about the mid to mid late part of the month. And then Bitcoin then waits for the labor market data to come in the following month before deciding its next move. So you're probably just seeing something like that here happening once again. But anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.